Hi everyone, welcome in. How's it going? So the tune that we're gonna be working on today is called Selinger's Round and it's spelled a couple different ways. Some spell it with an E, some spell it with an I, so you'll see it a couple of different ways. But hopefully you were able to take a look at the sheet music and if not, it is in the Jam Workshop resources folder, which I sent the link for in the email that I sent earlier today, about an hour ago, and then the one that I sent on Friday with all of the Jam Workshop information and the links and all of that. So if you want to take a second to go ahead and pull that up so you can have the sheet music in front of you for the sake of the melody, if you want to take a look at the melody and the chords as well, because we're going to be focusing on those two things mainly today. So go ahead and take a second to do that. And if you already have it pulled up, just double check that your original sound is on and that'll make for a much better audio experience today. As I said, we're going to be working on the tune Selinger's Round, so that it is a renaissance dance tune, and it's pretty straightforward in terms of rhythm. We have a lot of repetition in the rhythm, and it is a tune that was originally written for the lute, which is what we would think of today as a guitar. It's very similar to the modern guitar, um, so if you listened to the recording, you probably heard some of that, but I, I will go ahead and play the tune for you all so that you can hear it and then we will get into the melody. So it goes like this. So that's the tune, we're in 6-8 time, and it is in C major, although we do have a couple of accidentals. But as I said, it's a pretty simple melody, there's not a ton going on, and you might have noticed that although it is on the slow to moderate side, I did not add any vibrato. Really the, the focus of this tune is the melody, and just really allowing the, the purity of the melody to come through in a really clean way. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and play a C major scale, and then we will break down the melody phrase by phrase. So we're gonna start on the G string with a low C, and we're just gonna do a one octave C major scale as half notes. Everyone ready? Here we go. One, two, ready, go. But let's go ahead and start with this first phrase. As I said, we're in 6-8 time, so keep that in mind as we're going through. We're starting on a G on the D string, that's our first note, so find that note. Third finger, and I'll go ahead and play the first phrase slowly, and just do your best to repeat it back to me. Here we go. Your turn. So in terms of ornaments and embellishments, we're not going to add any today to this just because, like I've said a few times now, we're trying to really place an emphasis on the melody and keeping it very clean and allowing the melody to sing through and being very clear on the rhythm aspect of this tune. I will say that because this was written for the lute and thus translates really nicely to guitar specifically, you will hear the rolled chords played on the guitar. So, you know, you'll have the, on the downbeats, you'll have the rolled chord followed by the melody. So rolled chord, melody, rolled chord, melody, and it adds that nice little bit of embellishment to the melody. That's not really something that we can do with it sounding the same way. We do have the, the capability to roll chords on the violin, but it sounds very different bowed versus plucked or strummed. So we'll leave that to the guitar players and the lute players, the mandolin players, and um, and again, just in our case, just focusing on what we can do, which is really focus on the tonality and the beautiful quality that we can create with our bows. 
So moving on to the chords in terms of backing up the melody, if you were to play this with somebody else, we're gonna talk about that now. So our first chord that we have is a G chord, actually. So we're not starting on C. We do have a bunch of C chords in here, but we're starting on a G chord. So in this case, we're just gonna play a simple open G and open D together. Okay, and a lot of the times in this tune, we have just one chord per measure. Sometimes we have two. So in the cases where we have just one chord for a measure, you can decide if you want to take two bows, one, two, three, four, five, six, or just one sustained bow the whole time. It's up to you and what you like the sound of better and what is the most comfortable for you to actually achieve when you're playing this. So let's go ahead and just try this G chord in time. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, but for now, we're gonna do one last playthrough of this tune, Selinger's Round. And I want you to either play chords or melody. You've got one of two options. So take your pick this last time around. All right, everybody ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. That's great work. Yeah, lots of chords, lots of notes for the melody, but as I said, really the main focus of this tune is the rhythm and the melody and just making sure that you're able to keep everything really clear um, and allowing the melody to really come through because again, it is a dance tune, so we wanna make sure to honor that aspect of it. Okay, does anybody have any final thoughts or questions? anything at all. All right, well, our next workshop is gonna be slightly different. I mentioned this in the last, last workshop, but if you weren't here, um, it's gonna be on May 14th, which is also a Sunday, but a little bit earlier in the month. Thanks, Bob, I'm glad you enjoyed the tune. So May 14th is gonna be the next workshop, and it is a play-along style workshop, so more in the style of an actual jam session. So if that's something that you're wanting to get more familiar with, playing tunes that are common to jam sessions. We're mostly gonna be working with old time tunes, old time, a little bit of bluegrass as well. Um, but we're gonna do about 10 tunes and they're all relatively easy, definitely standards that you will come across in jam sessions. And it's just an opportunity for you to get used to playing along with those tunes, playing them over and over and over again, just like you would in a jam session, and also being able to back up the melody. So Nate, if any of you remember Nate, our, my guitar player, he's gonna be back for that and he's gonna be playing some chords. I'm gonna be playing the melody and you can do whatever you feel needs the most work in that setting. So the first half of this, the session, the hour is gonna be playing the tunes at a slower tempo so just kind of slowing things down, making sure that you're able to grasp the melodies and all of that and um, take your time in figuring out chords and all of that. And then the second half of the workshop is going to be playing the tunes, the same set of tunes at a slightly faster, closer to performance tempo so that you have an understanding of how they would be played in a typical jam session. So I hope to see you guys there. Thanks so much for coming this evening and I hope to see you soon. Bye, good night everyone.